Hello, hello. Welcome back to Adobe Live, everyone. Uh, we've got some uh, great animated type design for you today uh, from your friendly neighborhood animated type designer, uh, Matt Voice. Matt, how you doing? With great power comes great responsibility, so I hear. <laughs> yeah, he picked on the old Spider-Man theme there. Absolutely. Um, welcome back to Adobe Live. I think this is, uh, you're saying your second or maybe your third time streaming with us? Uh, yeah, third time. Third time in yeah. the last two years, so it's nice to be back once again. Amazing. Uh, for those of you who may be new to Adobe Live, by the way, uh, we stream uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays and Fridays um, for the UK, and we also have streams in Germany uh, and France, and there's ones in the US, pretty much all over. Uh, and if you want to find all of those, they are on behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that's fine. You can carry on there. But if you want to join in with the chat, then make sure you do head over to Behance and uh, click on the live stream tab. And uh, that's where we are. So welcome everyone who is currently in the chat. Um, hello to some familiar faces, Sandrine, Sean, Angus, uh, Jane, Michelle, uh, Gareth, and Reverb Mike, Reverb Mike, Reverb Mike, and Oliver. And yeah, welcome everyone. How are you doing? Um, Matt, this is going to be a fun one, I think. Uh, I saw your Instagram and I was like, this is something I definitely want to see on a stream. Um, so I'm glad to uh, glad to have you here and, and show some of your work. We're currently looking at your website here and um, yes. just immediately so much fun and, uh, mm. and animation happening. Uh, do you want to introduce a little bit about your work and you know what you're up yeah. to and other things? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, I, uh, originally I started out as kind of like an illustrator, designer. Uh, moved into motion, loved experimenting with typography, and then just started combining like a, a bit of a love of animation with type design, really. And mm -hmm. it's just kind of spiraled. I've I've been able to sort of create this this fun world of type that lives and kind of breeds, and um, it's just something that's really comfortable and it's something that's come really sort of organically to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the beauty of it is it's not always just type design. Like there's always like fun little characters and little stickers and, you know, there's, there's, there's so much more to it than just, I guess, bringing type to life. It's how it sort of works with other assets and other sort of elements and can just enhance things like live footage, especially. So like, like doing things on top of still themes and, you know, seeing how type can be integrated into into these fun scenes with bright colors and and lots of movement. It's yeah, it's it's like a a world that I'm really comfortable in, but never thought I would be in. Yeah, no, it's uh, I mean, it seems like a very playful, very fun world. Um, I'm immediately seeing these as just things that you know, very shareable. That's mm. um, I imagine how you know a lot of people find your stuff is because it's just so easily shared. Of you know, here's something I enjoyed. I think you'll enjoy it too. And that's kind yeah. of potentially yeah. how things spread. Um, uh, I am actually immediately curious though of where where do you get the actual words from? Like, is it just, you know, you start the day and you're like, oh, I'm going to make a LinkedIn bio animate thing or I'm going to make a Yeah, uh, a I mean, if it's, if it's not a like commercial or client work, then it, it is very much just finding or just thinking of a random word. It, it can come from anywhere. I used to have... I think I still have, I have a list of notes on my phone and it's it's a single note uh, file on my iPhone, but it's just filled with hundreds of words that I still have yet to animate or yet to bring a life. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes where a lot of this kind of started was was creating Instagram stickers. Um, okay, yep. So I, I created some, uh, try and find some, they were kind of like repeating typography, uh, kind of like this this kind of stuff for, for FIFA Euros. Um it was repeating type and I, I put those out on Instagram through Giphy and they started mm -hmm. to trend and that's kind of where that whole sort of shareability sort of picked up. Um, and and then, yeah, it, it, sometimes now it's, it's kind of like if I'm doing something on Instagram or on uh, social media and I want to put like a, an animated sticker on whatever it is I'm sharing, if mm -hmm. the sticker's not there, if I'm searching for the words, like, or if there's stickers there but I haven't done one, and it's like I could definitely do something cool that's much more sort of relevant to me. Then that's where the the kind of thing will come. But um, I try and do it every single day, every single yeah. day on top of like freelance client work, really, just to sort of keep it fresh, really, and and to keep those skills fluid and and, and learning and practicing, really. 
I'm I'm imagining that this is kind of similar to me when when I used to uh, maintain my blog. So every time I'd come to write a new blog post or something, I'd be like, ah, oh, I've got an idea for a plugin. And then I'd go mm. and code something up and, and build something. And before I yeah. know it, this blog post wouldn't get finished until maybe like a few days later because I'm like, oh, I, I need yeah. to create some sort of like <laughs> thing because I know I'm going to use this again in another blog post. Yeah, it happened yeah. every single time. I could never just sit down and make something. And I imagine the same for you where you want to do a social post being like, oh, this would benefit from this type of sticker, which I don't have. Mm. So do you, it is, it do you is, find yourself yeah. like slowing down actually posting because you immediately get an idea of how you can make it better as you're about to hit publish? Yeah, I mean, sometimes that is the case. And uh, the, the problem I found myself in now is that I, uh, towards the start of the year, I started playing with sound effects and sound right. design. So now anytime I'm Open creating something and I've not, I have not put sound on it, I'm like, ah, oh, this is really missing something. Mm -hmm. So that adds like another couple of hours on. So I have to kind of factor in these things. Like if I really want to step this up and bring it to life and, and for it to be like the best it can be, then I've got to find some sound effects and make some sounds for it as well. So um, yeah. there's always something more to elevate it. And I think that's, yeah. I don't know, that's, that's part of the beauty of it is it is just like making it more, making this lettering and this typography feel more than just a word, making it feel like it's alive and that it is something more tangible in a way. Mm. And uh, in terms of the actual work that we're looking at here, I'm assuming mm. that these are all animated GIFs at the moment that we're looking at. Um, yeah, yes. Yeah, these are just like the uh, project covers that are just GIFs on top of on top of the project. I'm, I'm going to assume that most of your work is actually not GIFs. You, you export them out as just regular video files and things? Yeah, most of the time. I, I did go through a phase of doing these like this, this, this sticker pack. I was doing sticker packs for clients. That was the first sort of world i lived in as like a freelance designer mm. um but you know with all, all those kind of social things they they trend for a while and then they sort of drop off the radar so right i was hoping to never just be doing animated stickers for the rest of my life because yeah. i wanted to be able to sort of create this this cool world of type but then you know to one day see it on a cinema screen or see it like on my tv in front of me um mm. and that's that's kind of where i kind of i, I want to be like kind of pushing with it so like or exporting in like mp4s or mob files to then be used with and on live footage and to be on tv adverts and you know mm. to be just to be something more than just a quick social sticker i want it to be to, to live and breathe it kind of thing yeah okay so this is kind of like a stepping stone onto other stuff and, and potentially yeah. getting clients because yes. they see this yeah. work and um yeah i imagine that that does very well for you mm. uh, i can also imagine you know getting quite uh inspired by things like animated titles for like title sequences for movies and tv shows yeah. and stuff. there's a there's a fantastic website called art of the title and it's pretty much got every single opening credits or closing credits scene that has typography and lettering and logos in from any film and I'm it has that right now <laughs> it has youtube links it has screenshots and it has who's created it as well it's got everything you can search for a film and it's there and and you can get lost in that site for hours and i want to be on that site one day you know having Amazing. a title on there that would be a uh, dream come true in a way yeah that is exactly the type of website that i've wanted to find for ages there's yes. a there's a similar site uh i signed up to i think it's called shot deck yeah shot deck um kind of similar not for animated titles but if you want to get okay. um frame grabs of movies then they've gone through and they're just constantly adding films all the time. Oh, nice. It's great because then you can build your own storyboard. So, for example, if I want to work on a film and I'm like, oh, I need a, an opening shot from a, a plane, for example, and I think, ah, oh, Fight Club had a great scene, uh, the way yeah. that was framed. Let me go and search for Fight Club for the airplane scene, grab that, and then oh, nice. piece together your own storyboard based on actual movies. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, super I've never cool. heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, uh, should we jump into some After Effects? And, uh, um, we should really. That is why we are we're here. going to jump through. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I wanted to share a few techniques that can help bring the simplest of kind of words to life. Um, they're not really sort of labor intensive. They're not really like technical or complicated. And they're things that can be easily replicated and can just make a word kind of feel alive. Um, and they're just little things that I've picked up over time and things that I've practiced with and 
things that I think um, they're just like nice little uh, kind of like shortcuts to make things just just fun, really. Mm -hmm. um, so normally I would jump into Illustrator and I sometimes plan my work out in Illustrator, like specifically for words before I'm animating them. Okay. Um, so it's that's kind of like a sort of a normal sort of workaround. Um, and then sometimes when I get on some projects and I have to make text that is uh, animated but still live so people can t change the language of it, uh, then I do it like this in um, yep. in After Effects. Um, but I'm going to go straight in and use a font from Adobe Fonts, of course. Okay. Uh, and I've got a Rock question Pro immediately, actually, of uh, yeah, what comp, comp size and uh, what settings you're using on your composition. Uh, so this is uh, 1400 pixels by 1400. Don't, okay. why, don't know why it's so specifically 1400. I just happen to have fallen on that. Um, yep. Frame rate's 12. It's just come through as 12 automatically. Sometimes I work in 24, sometimes in 60. 60 is like mm -hmm. amazing for smooth and hypnotic sort of animations. Um, mm -hmm. And I always work to uh, an even number just so it's easy for um, looping frames and getting that seamless transitions of, of loops. So Got that's just a, just a basic setup really. Uh, um, so I guess you would prefer 24 over 25 then for standard UK. Yeah, I I, 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 I get asked to use 25 when I'm doing some commercial projects, um, but I prefer 24 just because of the quick maths for working out, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. six frames is a quarter, a 12 is, is going to be half my loop, and it's just just how I do it. And I know you can kind of drag your keyframes along and make them fit, but um, yeah, yeah I like to work bit... it and then just... Mm. Yeah. Just gets a bit it's, messy when you open a file, yeah. but especially if it's like an older file, and you look at your keyframes and they're just not quite in position. You're like, "Why is yes. that?" And then you realize because you probably yeah, adjusted yeah. it after the client asked you. And um, yeah, yeah. I guess it's the yeah. same with uh, um, with design in terms of grids. Like, I I like working with a twelve column grid just because twelve is so divisible. Like one, yeah. twelve, two, six, three, four. Yeah. Um, yeah. Twenty four gives you double that even. Yeah, it does. Um, I know what you mean. So I'm um, I'm choosing a very positive word, of course. Nope. <laughs> um, yeah. I've just chosen a font that I know has uh, it's it's it, the way it's built. If I go to paths, for example, um, it's got the minimal amount of points. So if I'm going to start sort of dragging things up, there's not hundreds of points I have to move and mess around with. Um, it. it works well for things like E's and and P's and other things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like a nice font that I know is, is kind of reliable. Mm. Um, so what I want to do with this one is just do a really simple sort of repeating bounce. Um, and sometimes I use this motion tools palette. Uh, it just speeds up moving things like anchor points and uh, like extracting my letters if I want them all on separate layers. Um, oh, just nice. kind of speeds up that, that sort of process. Whereas normally you'd either have to type out letter by letter or, or go into contents and pull each one of these out and it's just a bit quick for me um does so, it do the inverse of that if you've separated them out can you then bring them back yes again? yeah you can merge so if i could cool. uh, extract them sling them wherever i want to for whatever reason and then merge them it's still one layer it's quite wow. clever um, yeah that is just speeds up. pretty impressive that's called motion tools mm. yeah yes from i think it's from motion design school i think um yeah so yeah like i said I, used, I like to work in even numbers especially like 24 or 12 frames just so it's nice and sort of even um and this is literally just going to be like a really simple bounce and animation i use a lot of expressions as well like loop out just so i'm not carrying keyframes over that's why i'm going too fast i like to uh power on through play with the speed graph as well which always mm -hmm. helps give you that effect of gravity and I've got my looping expression on there so that's forever looping and that, that alone is quite nice it's just a simple yep. you know bounce You've got a few but, people recognizing uh motion tools being used yep. in multiple streams today so um yeah it's yeah it's very clever um because I want this to be a bit more character filled uh I'm gonna like squish it down so you've got some kind of impact and then on the release I'm going to stretch it out. So again, it, when it's 
launching off it's got a bit of vigor to it um and then when it hits the ground i want it to be a very quick transition of popping on there so again we've been out and then that's just me easing the frames but now you see you get like a nice it's just got a bit uh, something more to it really mm. um, what was the uh what was the shortcut used just to ease those Oh, so it's uh, command F, not F, command F nine, function F nine. Cool. Um, it's nice, nice. Or you can just go right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, whatever, whatever is easier for you. Um, so that's got kind of like a nice bounce to it. And now this is where this kind of thing comes in handy because I want to sort of offset these and just give it a bit more, just another level of, of fun. So if I ext extract those, the thing you have to be careful of is, is because it's choosing individual shapes as their own layers, it's then changing the anchor point. So now when it stretches, you'll see it's lost its sort of baseline. Mm. So that's where you can either go to anchor points and move your letters, or if you've got a tool like this, just level it off. And then you're back to normal. And then so fast i will do i know <laughs> i will yes, sequence honestly these. so useful and then drag them over just so my initial if basically if i sequence these and if i don't drag them along it's how it it's the animation starts nice but then you get to the end and there's no loop because there's nothing here and nothing exists beyond this where you've sequenced forward so I Sick. often just drag them and that's the first one. And it's as simple as that. A nice little bouncy nope. Um, Amazing. Yeah. It's just, just, just fun. Just fun little characters in a way. A and just for, well. for argument's sake, if you wanted to change anything on here, are they, mm -hmm. have you lost that because they're now outlines or? Yeah. So these aren't editable um, okay. letters anymore. Um, you can change the path still, so it could, uh, you could kind of have a look at your path. Uh, you could like kind of, if you wanted to, I don't know, just pull some stuff around and mm. say thin your letter out as it bounces. You can do that. And then that's kind of part of your animation so that it goes up it thins out but um hmm. yeah beyond that you kind of that's that's it that's your yeah. uh your level of customization apart from coloring and stylization got you so amazing was, that was rapid i think that was yeah that's all done in about six minutes with yeah, oh I need, to, well. I need to slow down <laughs> <laughs> goodness me um i always like to work very neatly um mm -hmm. I always keep really organized. If I've got loads of footage in here, I'll make folders that say footage or layered. You know, it's just, it just helps. It my ears. Yeah. It, otherwise, when I first started working After Effects, like I would just sling everything in there, not rename any pre comps. It'd just be like comp one, comp two, comp three, comp four. Oh, wow. And yeah. you just obviously you just get lost, lost in, lost in comps. So mm. um, I like to sort of stay really neat. Um, and now I'm just making like a, a little master just layer. Just wondering, so. actually. Um, so in Photoshop, there's uh, in the layers uh, panel options, you can disable it adding the word copy. So when you duplicate a layer, it no longer okay. says like layer one copy, layer one copy copy. Um, I wonder if After Effects has a similar thing, maybe. I'll have a look into mm. that. Because um, that's one way of staying organized on top. Because, yeah, you don't want just duplicating and then the name just... no getting larger and larger without yeah. really paying attention it's not ideal at all um yeah that's that's a good point uh next one this is it's kind of one of those things that everyone loves and it's really trendy and it has been for years it's uh morphing type between different weights um okay yep. again it's it's really simple um i've immediately the, got some questions about this actually oh uh, really and the so, reason uh, i've chosen rock grotesque is because between its different weights that's the wrong one let's stay in the same actual family 
Uh, so if I got like, and what is this? It's extra wide. You have to make sure you stay in the exact same. So now if I create shapes from these, it's not going to let me do it the old fashioned way, create shapes. So now what I mean by this is like on paths. Now you can see here for the O, for example, there's two points there, two points there, two there, two there. Mm -hmm. So that means that if it, this is only with some fonts as well, like you have to be really careful because I'll show one in a minute and it would just, it just goes mental. But if you have your points on your letter there and then like your, your heavier weight, Again, search different paths. What you can do is you can copy your heavy paths into your light paths. Ah, uh, amazing. And it morphs. You've just done the literally. first and end. Yeah. And that's how you can easily transition. Um, and that's why it works so well with Rock because um, all of the font weights and families are built with the same amount of anchor points. Yeah. Uh, whereas... I'll try and find a good example. If you use, uh, mm, what's going to be crazy? Some fonts have just so many anchor points. Uh, you could try. Um, See, I was wondering if you were, if you needed to specifically use uh, one of the new flexible font formats. Yeah, I, I know there's variable fonts, and that's it. Variable font, yeah. You can get variable font, variable font plugins, but I've just never used them. Um, I get more flexibility and more customization over just doing it by hand and dragging points. Mm. And yeah. um, you know, it's not always as easy as that. It's not always as easy as uh, doing that. Like sometimes I morph between different fonts, and that's where you have to really okay. focus on where your points are going between the letters so that they they change fonts. Really, mm. um, I, I'm just trying to think of a good font that's going to be crazy. Uh, I'll try this. I'll try Sh Shevin Pro. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, let's say again, do this. It depends if they've, if they've been built with the same amount of, um, anchor points. So if not, then it's not going to work. Mm -mm. It's just these up before I start getting lost. Are there any particular letters that are kind of notorious for having different sets of anchor points? Uh, S's. S's are hell okay. on earth because they're just, <laughs> oh, they're just so difficult. Um, yeah, S's can be a nightmare. They're just, some fonts just have hundreds and hundreds of points. Mm. Um, I've got a feeling this is probably going to morph fine now I've said this. Um, is that potentially more noticeable when you're using fonts from like a, a less established foundry? So maybe like more of an amateur font design? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I guess from a from a designer's perspective, drawing the perfect S, I can imagine a lot of designers, you know, getting frustrated and maybe just giving up at times and being like, oh, that'll do. And so yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, left with uh, the that'll do response. Yeah, definitely. Um, that That is it, yeah. What I'll, what I'll do is I can't find a font off the top of my head, so... I'll show you what I mean when I try and flick between these two because Sean although... is asking, can we change nope to nose so that we can see an S? Oh, nose. Okay. Of course. There's a nice S. And then just delete that. Oh, no, hold on. I need that for later. So if I choose uh, the Avenir, that will be cool. Uh, so if I choose these two, squeeze them out a bit. Now, if I'm hoping this works, so rise. Just go in circles. <laughs> so it's I guess, yeah, the key thing here is that the top one we've got a, a harsh anchor point and then you've got rounded with oh like yeah that's two or three. that's that's gonna throw up some problems i tell you uh so if i'm copying again again copying these 
points to this only using the same word because I know for a fact they're going to have the same main amount of shapes. So one, one, two, mm -hmm. the ascent of the O counts as a shape and those two. There you go. That's what happens. It's still, it's trying to work out how to morph these two shapes yeah. into, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, you can see. It looks good if, you, if you're just trying to read gibberish, but... This is uh, After Effects saying nope. <laughs> Yes, exactly. It really is. Um, so that's it's why almost, if it's you're... almost like a, a stop animation of like a, a crinkled up paper, like thinking. Yeah, I mean, of, don't um, get me wrong. Like... If, I, I guess you could uh, you could add some. Um, we're trying to like uh, make it a bit a bit nicer. Uh, I think you could kind of like. Roughen the edges, and yep. it might make it a little better. So there's there's ways to sort of flick through, and I guess I guess you could again lower the frame rate so that it's even. Oh no! So it's a bit more posterized, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, there's ways there's ways around it. I think. Um, but yeah, sorry. Short, long story short, that's why. You have to be careful when you look into mm -hmm. the well, fonts. It's, it's good to know these things in advance because you know you don't want to find yourself down a rabbit hole and then realize at the last minute that it just doesn't work for whatever reason. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's good to kind of be prepared. I think mm. we've got a question here. Then, so would you would you just fix that manually, or like how yes. would you go about doing that? Just by adding an yeah. extra anchor point? Yeah. So. You can you can do that, and the beauty of it is if you do that later down the line, After Effects works out how to get rid of it or morph it back into the shapes previous to that. So it, it does work like that. You can sort of that is a workaround to make mm. it um, easier in a way. Mm. Um, yeah, you can do that. It does it does work. Nice. So, so back to this. I'm just going to make another layer for when I do my next one. So are we looking at the same font family here, just different weight? Is that what yeah. we come back to? Yeah. 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 Same, same font, just different weights. And again, just looking for paths. Selecting army paths. Hold on, I'm running on 128 frames. That's not going to be good. That's why my why my computer fan is spinning. <laughs> Gotta work out I was going to say it's been pretty smooth up until then. Um, yeah. What what Mac are you on? Uh, it's like a 2019 Mac. Uh, just an iMac 2019 Mac. Yeah. All oh, right. Nice. Yes, yeah, running super smooth. Especially yeah. that bounce effect on the the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, even if I uh, I bump this up to sixty because there's no textures or complex shapes in it, it should load in pretty quick. Yep. So you get nice smooth motion on that. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's working all right so far. It's it can be temperamental. I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> it's it's holding out. Um, so this is just a, a kind of simple weight morph um again i kind of like to play with the speed graph to see what happens when you mess around uh there is an expression for looping these uh paths but it's very long and it's buried somewhere in my notes folder so for the sake of this i'm just going to copy and paste more yeah. of the same keyframes along so that i can kind of drag things along um could could you pre-compose it and then loop that composition with that yeah definitely thing. yeah yep. yeah that's definitely a, a workaround um yeah that would work so again i'm just trying to add like another effect here on top but i also have a another tool down here called easy copy uh so for example if um 
if I had these three keyframes, you have to select the same amount of keyframes if it's the, sort of an expression copier. Um, so in, let's say like these were really specific and you know, like you, sometimes you're trying to drag different layers and you're trying to match up, you know, is that mm -hmm. the same percentage? I know you can kind of type it in, but for speed, you can uh, copy your three, copy them with easy copy, select another three keyframes and it will then copy the exact sort of the motion. So they, they kind of match. Um, oh, cool. It's kind of like a good little workaround. I want it to be the same. I feel like I need to get on board with um, just finding a few plugins and stuff. I, I feel like I don't do After Effects enough to sort of warrant installing too many plugins and other stuff. But then yeah. I see how how much further it extends the capabilities at times. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, that, that just like opens so many more doors of experimentation yeah. and, and other things. Yeah, it does. There's, there's, there's obviously it's just so much, so much you can do and there's so many quick ways now to sort of get around mm. doing really complex things. And that's the beauty of like plugins, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm just making a master here to sort of put my comps in. Nice. Uh, so right. yeah, that's just another technique, simple technique that's kind of fun and easy and yeah. Oh, cool. So good. we kind of built on the original style with the, the sort of bouncing to some extent and then um, yeah. just adding the uh, the weight shift as well. Nice. Yeah, definitely. It's just like a nice sort of another thing you can do, but I've just noticed it doesn't loop for some reason. Did you did you address the the tracking on any of that? Because it's interesting actually that the weight has gone up, but the actual width of the text itself is the same. Yeah, that's uh, that's dependent on the font as well. Luckily, okay. If your rock grotesque, for example, has the same tracking on each sort of section of font, so extra wide has the same tracking, right. wide has the same condensed, so. Um, you don't have to sort of mess around with that, whereas some fonts you yeah. have to play with the positions or just um, drag out the sort of the anchor points a bit more just to just to yeah. make up for it in a way. I'm just um, thinking that's a yeah. bug for some, a feature for others. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> just getting out of loop. Again. So fast with this, whizzing through. This is amazing. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to slow down. <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to hard to simplify sometimes when you get so used to doing things. Mm -hmm. um, you and almost that, that start just... to forget what you're doing because you're trying to slow down and you get lost. Yeah, but that shines through yeah. though. That it it proves that by doing this daily and by throwing yourself at something even when you've got other work on and, and other things, it allows you to then be faster in your other work because you're clearly building up, you know, the muscle memory and other things. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely, I find myself sometimes in all software where my brain just takes over and I'm just not really sure where I've gone with things and it's just happened. And it's like <coughs> complete autopilot. And I'm like, yeah. sometimes I can't actually <laughs> process what I need to do. I just know that if I just let it happen, it will all be in the right place and yeah, done. Yeah. It's a weird feeling when you get there. It is. It really is. It's um but like I say, it is like muscle memory. Like these shortcuts mm -hmm. I don't even think twice. It just just yeah. do it. Just from yeah. practicing every day, every day, every day. Um yeah, it's it's a very weird thing. It just shows how you you grow in and sort of learning, I guess, as a designer or as a as a motion designer. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's it's almost like you're you're clearly you know gaining skills and becoming more intelligent in the way that you're working but at the same time your personal self isn't getting any smarter that you're like i can't keep up with myself like i can't work out yeah. how my own brain is is working on this i just have to yeah trust yeah it. yeah it's, it's weird it's a weird thing um so this one i thought i'd just do a very simple uh kind of like a scale reveal in a way um okay. So I've got my two my two fonts. I've set my anchor points um, on the sides, which I think is where I want them. I'll find out in a minute when I um, try and align all of this. 
they use the align tool quite a lot as well that's quite handy for moving things around mm -hmm. so the plan is here to basically uh, kind of like an accordion compress and and switch the type around and uh, we'll see if it works it should work uh so i'm going to put this down to zero again 128 frames <laughs> oh, nice what's wrong with me um so the plan is to bring this out so it's going to sort of come in like this whilst my heavier weight does the opposite so okay. it's kind of like yep. a kind of like oh, an accordion in a way very cool i like that really simple but um it's just quite yeah. it's got quite quite a nice effect to it um in some ways so that, again if i'm going to repeat of, this you... it's looking like a, a cool transition um I, I don't mean this to sort of degrade the thing but it looks like a like a keynote transition or like a um like a push yeah yeah between two slides yeah yeah like a, i like that i think a lot of my stuff is it's based it's not based but it's it's got like references of like old like microsoft tech like word art yeah. and you know those really subtle just the, the, the originally that looked like really childish and crappy in a way these are just mm. like i don't know it's it's bringing those sort of reference points to life in a way um mm -hmm. and they're still there somewhere in the recesses of your head like you know what you grew yeah, up I, with in a way i guess even just the color palette like a, a gif only has 256 colors i think um yeah so yeah just limited options and other things yeah so it's just uh i don't know it's always there um it's weird but um so now i kind of want this to repeat so you could pre-compose it um you can't really adjust the anchor point as easily when i try to adjust adjust the anchor point sometimes it throws off where your type's gonna sort of sit um right. so i find it easier to split my layers and then if i bring these back up I'm going to try and get this to loop. And what I'd need to do is basically flip all my animations. So flip the anchor points on that, as well as this. So I'm reverse. Again here, wait till it's fully expanded so I can see where my actual anchor points are. And on the right. So have you set both anchor points in exactly the same position, or are they relative to each other? I haven't quite seen that. Uh, yeah, so they're they're on the X or Y axis, they're in the same position, um, but okay. they're just inverted on opposite sides of your shape. So that now uh, so when I'm sort of trying to get this, you've got that loop. It's kind of repeated. Um, and again, you, you know, you could, yeah, you could take these out if you wanted to, and you could just time reverse them, but then you are just going to get back and forth, which isn't a bad thing. It's quite a nice thing. Mm. Um, It has a nice kind of repeat to it, but I kind of want it it's to go. A little bit predictable doing that. Whereas yeah. the other way is it's kind of you weren't quite expecting it. Um Yeah, it's kind of nice to to kind of play with it like that. Um let's repeat these again. How long would you normally spend on uh a social graphic that you're, you're sort of doing? Uh, I only try and spend a couple of hours max like I try and because I I do have a life I can't sit on my computer all day <laughs> with client work and doing type animations um well, you've got I, a dog to walk so and I've got an energetic dog to walk um <laughs> yeah I, I limit myself to like one or two hours normally um yeah and you know it's only one or two hours now because I've been doing this solidly for like three four years like every single day almost like six to eight hours a day otherwise mm -hmm. i would be spending the day creating a social graphic whereas now it's like i know what i want to do if i've got the word ready then i can just i don't always plan how it's going to, how it's going to animate i often do just type a word in illustrator chuck it in after effects and just i don't know just just take ideas from the bank of motion styles mm -hmm. that are in my head and see what works yeah um yeah it's just a funny thing I can see with uh, just having a little snoop around your room there with the posters behind. Um, 
is that like illustration style is that sort of where you get some of your inspiration from uh a, a little yeah like um got like Jean julian over there um i've always kind of loved his sort of his illustration style and then uh another poster from gary percival who just like type designs um you know there's all these kind of things and these styles and um there's like a little there's a john bergerman print down there there's my sleeping oh, nice. dog he's relaxed um <laughs> There's John Bergman print down there, and I love his way of uh, illustrating. And I guess I guess they're all kind of reference points that sit in kind of sit in your mind in a way. Mm. Um, yeah, they all help feed into whatever it is I'm creating. Uh, so I was just going to try and change the colors on this, but I might keep it one color only. Yeah. So so what I do now is because this is getting a bit messy put this into a folder called notes so then i've got my master comp here and i'm here i'm just duplicating my comps aligning it having it highlighted in here going to my notes and then holding option dragging it in and then it replaces it for you so you don't have to sort of mess around where it's going to be it just does it for you perfect so i'm getting like a nice bank now of animations um so yeah what's the uh Rowing. what's the largest master comp you've ever made i'm just imagining like showing uh, your whole portfolio of of things i had uh let me think i had i'm trying to think what would have had a ridiculous amount of layers um i've definitely had something that oh what could it have been i've had something before where it, it it had it was it was a very quick animation but it had to be it had to be split up um it had to change every every few seconds so um the colors had okay. to change and um the type had to change and it ended up being um oh, i can't think it's gonna bug me it's something like that where i've had to change the colors and the type every few seconds so i've had layers and layers and layers or it's been creating um i cannot go back here creating stuff like uh you know like these sort of icon animations like it might like it's only a couple of shapes but there's like 10 15 shapes in there and shadows and it's all yeah. keyframed and anchor pointed and there's there's a lot more that goes into it than you kind of realize mm -hmm. i guess in a way um mm -hmm. but yeah it's it's there's some that have been a nightmare and it will come to me after this and i'll realize yep. <laughs> it was that but i probably if it's client work i shouldn't say it was a pain because yep. i might get told off <laughs> just overall checking nice uh so i've got one more technique which is a it's a cool cool little one that i've been doing recently did it for a campaign uh, Sandrine is asking about the uh, the skateboards you've got. Are they also uh, designer or are they skateboards in use? Uh, they're not in use, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, the uh, the darker one is from uh, Ye Ye Weller, guy based in, in Germany who's like an illustrator. He's got an amazing sort of character design style. Um, I just love his, I've always loved his work and the way he just like type in characters. So I had to snap up a deck when I saw he was kind of putting them out there. Um, and then the one hidden behind a plant is from a guy from Birmingham called Super Freak. Um, yep. And I actually won that in a raffle on Instagram. So uh, that was, uh, that that was, was great. That was Sandrine's asking, are they Super yeah. Freak ones? So yeah, good spot. Yeah, the one on the right is. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. Because I've, I've, uh, Dan, who is Super Freak, I've been spotting him for kind of years, like buying his prints, his stickers. Um, I've kind of got his stuff like littered around my room in places. So, nice. um, and it was just a pure chance I, that I won. Um, <laughs> this was before I sort of had like a following or had, um, I had like a very standard normal in Instagram account of like a couple of hundred people. So it was quite nice to sort of, and they win something that that's <laughs> not just won because I have like a following and yep. you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, so sorry just for this one. So I'm going to try and create like a globe that's got like the, it, it's kind of like a sphere that has the type repeating and flowing on it. Um, so I'm going to create like a pre comp that has a really simple set of repeating type lines. And then um, 
I'll pre-compose that and then chuck it into another note, note master and then add the effect onto that and it should sort of be something cool. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if this is going to be... So I was recently just animating like a, a title ticker. Um, oh, yeah. Like a, a looping thing. I uh, actually had some help with Tim on uh, some of the, the coding I sort of chatting about just before we went live. And um, yeah, I'm wondering if this is going to be a similar thing or I can see you've already gone a different direction. So maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, it might be. It might be the same. Um, it, everyone has different ways of, of doing these things, I guess. It's mm -hmm. the thing of it, isn't it? Uh, I'm just going to stick to the same font for the sake of this. Uh, so I've just got some basic repeating type. Um, the, I guess you could do repeating things like this in a few ways. You could do it like this, or uh, you can use an effect called Repetile, um, which if I... Uh, so if I had one of these, just a quick tip. Do yes. Uh, I think it'll work on this. If I did Repetile, you can do that. You can drag out oh, cool. no, like 4,000, okay. let's say, yeah. in every direction. Um, is that working as like a, a mask? Sort of, if uh, you, like, would you get half of the word or is it literally repeating it as a, a quantity? Yeah, just, just repeats it as a quantity, but uh, it's all based on this layer. So I whatever I change in that layer, uh, oh, cool. it's going to be there. And you can't edit these ones unless you edit this one. So this right. is like a master and it's like uh these are you kind of repeats um mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of like, like a nice sort of quick way to do repeating mm. shapes in a way yeah that's uh, a little bit quicker than the way i did it so i i took my text and i just did an expression of just repeat and then put the amount of times that i wanted to repeat it okay yeah um but then i had to adjust it and change it because it wasn't enough of a repetition at first and then other times too much whereas Okay. Using the effect might have just been a bit quicker to edit. So, mm. yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, nice. So now, um, he, I, just, I just basically just want to move this up and down the screen. People do it different ways. I tend to create like a, a null object, which I'll call mm -hmm. like position. And then I will parent that to this. And then a, a good kind of tip again is if you want something to like kind of smoothly uh, transition or repeat um, against a position. Uh, I use this down here, the um, snapshot. So if no one's ever used this, I'll take a snapshot there. Uh, if, uh, for example, if I'm moving this, if I'm going to shift this up here, if, if let's say I'm, I'm getting to here and I want it to be like a smooth repeat. Now that I've taken my snapshot, I can see my original snapshot. So if I click and hold, I can see basically what is my see. first frame. Yeah. Um, so I can adjust using the up and down arrows here mm. and keep clicking this so that there's no movement. So then I know. Uh, very cool. It's a bit like... Um... I think they're called like ghost frames in uh, yeah. like stop motion. Yeah. Yeah. Or like uh, onion skinning, I think is another that's one it, people yeah. call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's quite handy. So now it's got like a really basic bit of type oh, moving. Cool. Um, super simple, but Could that's you, just the pre comp if, in a way. If you animated that at, say, like a 45 degree angle, would it bring in like a a pattern to the left and right as well or that uh, way, it, depending on your your reptile yeah it, it would if i had reptile on this is now um i've gone back to text here but it will if you have reptile on it should do it for you it should update it and you, if, if you're looking at sort of if you're losing edges then you just extend how much you know the the sort of slider of how much is mm -hmm. repeated so just up the pixels and it should should show should be all right yeah Cool. Um, so yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. It's just a really simple movement loop, nothing special. So now, what I want to do is, if I go back to my master, if I duplicate that, I have one called globe, one called like globe type. So I'm not get confused. 
Get back to 1400 on here. Now, if I drag this in, uh, it's nothing special. It's just some type. But there's a wonderful After Effects tool called CC Sphere. <laughs> which this looks quite cool. This is like, yeah, yeah. it's got a bit of, bit of light, a bit of shine. You can kind of play with the radius, make it bigger on screen. This is definitely um, like nineties TV vibes. Yeah, yeah, it has. Um, I don't really Some want sort of Nickelodeon type thing. Yeah, it really is. It's it's, it's just got that nice kind of feel to it. Um, I don't really want any lighting on this. So I think if oh if I choose outside only, then it's hiding the inside. So now I've got this nice kind of sphered lettering um but what i don't want is i don't want this shade in so if i just fall the ambient for now mm -hmm. just check it's see-through yeah so it is see-through um so i guess you can either i'm basically just trying to get rid of that awkward shadowing um mm -hmm. you can either mess with the ambient or you can go layer style color overlay and add a color to it just as easy as that and I don't know. Not be anything really. So, but yeah, that's that's quite cool in itself. Um, mm. But I want to. You, there's there's other tools here that you can make it just a bit a bit cooler. Um, and it's all just about clicking and opening these and seeing what there is. So you can play with the rotations. So you can spin it that way, or you can start to go to your axis, and then and presumably yeah. you could keyframe this as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you could, That's you cool. could kind of, uh, is that the right one? Like this one. Yeah, so you could uh, you could kind of put your keyframes in there for your rotation points. Take these down here, maybe. Spin it around. And then you could have something crazy make it make it whatever you want really um yeah that's so cool can be something cool but um what i like about this effect is how you can see the the spawn point um so for some words you get these really nice shapes and things mm. coming through um it's just a nice just a nice kind of effect that is built in and all you've got to do is just apply it. it's the same if someone's trying to create like a a, a physical earth or a globe you just get a yep. flat lay like, picture of a map sling it in cc sphere and You've got like your uh, your circular globe. It's quite cool. Um, yeah, cool. And with these kind of things, I always like to just just see what else you can do. So if I just this is just off the cuff. I don't know if any of this is going to work. But if I'm just like slinging this in again to another composition, I sometimes just go to effect, uh, go to distort and warp and just start to see some of this might work or it might not you just start to play with these these other nice. effects that are in after effects you starting know? to mix in the effects of the the first yeah type style you did yeah it's just like you can do some cool stuff like you could oh, like flex wow. it uh change the distortion of it it's just all about playing like just this is how i've learned up, yeah. to do some of these stuff just it, often, often these things don't work but mm. you know if you don't actually try slide in all these options mm -hmm. then you, you never know what you're going to get um but i think for the sake of this i'll keep it nice and simple yeah and this Good. just comes back as well to having you know a, a machine that is able to keep up with you is that you can experiment with that and and um yeah just yeah. find out where your creativity leads yeah, definitely. Or, it just or doesn't does, does help if it goes wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and there, I've kind of got like a nice little, really quick set of type animations that are simple, not too labor intensive, and that are just uh, they're just just fun to play with. Um, yeah, it's yeah, just so an, cool. just just like a, an asset bank in your head of of ways to. <clears throat> sometimes I use it to warm up, like if I'm mm -hmm. jumping on like a new brief. I'll just sling a word into After Effects and then just start, I don't know, just seeing if anything anything works or anything sort of really 
um, connects with whatever the sort of brand or the message is trying to say, just as a, like mm-hmm. a warm up. Um, yep. Yeah. Just want to reference back to a question that came in a while back, uh, skipped over. It was, do you ever have any times where you where you just don't have inspiration? You know, you're you're doing things daily, and you just get to a point where you're like, I don't know what to make today. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, like, quite quite often. How do you, how do, you deal with um, that? I often I have like a uh, <clears throat> a saved folder on Instagram where I've saved like the work of not just like artists of like uh, color palettes, uh, sneakers, like posters, anything. So. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes if I'm struggling, even like a, a color palette can sort of kind of kick, kick in that idea of like, you know, that could, that'd be really nice color palette to put to a word. And that's already like a starting point. Mm. And then again, because like, you know, I've, I've been playing with all these different type styles over like the last few years and I have these, these ideas in my head already, then I'll just variate to one of those and just start playing with one of those ideas I already know works but just try and customize it along the way by, you know, doing exactly what we just saw then by adding those other layers and those effects to see if, to see if it can just come up with something new, really. Um, yeah. 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 I just, it just has to sort of just try and like, like to make it more than, more than what it can be really. And you mm-hmm. don't know unless you don't experiment in a way. Yeah. And then how about um, making these a little bit less destructive? So like making them as say motion graphics uh, templates, the Mogos, if you were to just, you know, change the text. Is that something yeah. that would obviously it would take you a lot longer? Um, mm. Is that something you'd, you'd find yourself doing much, or do you prefer uh, to I, just? I, yeah, recreate? I have been asked. I do get asked to do it quite often. Um, I guess because sometimes I'm working on sort of campaigns that aren't just going to be uh, centralised to like Europe or in the mm-hmm. UK or America. So um, things need to be able to be sort of changed and, and altered so yeah I imagine you know, language is probably the the first thing yeah yeah um so you know it's having that in mind before i start creating is is going to be like a, a sort of big big help in a way um because like if i'm trying to sort of change type on something and you get too far down like the rabbit hole like you say like it's it takes, sometimes it takes so long trying to have, um, recreate something in another language or most of the time if I've been given something that I have to then provide the file to another team so that they can mm. change the language so um, there's there's limitations that's where some people use for example um, in the morph that's where some people use those variable fonts because you can do the font changing the weight changing without having to make them shapes yeah. Um, so there is those tools and those workarounds that you can use. Um, yeah, it's just having that in mind before you start spending all this time creating like these these crazy effects that then can't be changed, and it's it's it's, it's limiting because you can't mm. always you can't always do the same thing for for live text. But it's just knowing well, I, that. I'd say the opposite also happens where I'm I'm potentially guilty of the fact that quite often when I'm you know, animating things or making them, I'm coming with the intention that I am going to make it editable and changeable. But that then comes at the the limitation on creativity because I'm maybe yeah. not experimenting as much. And so yeah. because I've not had that freedom to just say, oh, I'm just going to make it and it'll be broken when it's done. Um, I've missed out those happy accidents and other things because I'm thinking too much of the end goal of like, how do yeah. I code this or script it that it's if I change this box, everything else is going to follow and be attached. To yeah, it. <laughs> that's that's it. And that those happy accidents are how I've got some of like how I've got like new projects and how I've made some like some techniques that have stuck with me for years, just because they just happen to work. Um, mm. And it doesn't always work when you're using live text, unfortunately. Yeah. So having that yeah. that that freedom and flexibility to make shapes and 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 see letters as physical shapes and and less of like a a, a structured shape or a structured letter um yeah see them as shapes it just it opens all those doors basically and it, it can be that, so much that's more actually a great tip um yeah seeing it more as as geometry than than text yeah 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 it can be something uh, fantastic we've uh we've got just a, a minute left or so but stuart's just come in <laughs> with a great question um given that we're in december do you have a highlight for the year 
Like, is there anything that's uh, that stood out to you from your work? Uh, the, uh, there is a highlight, but I can't talk about it just yet Ooh. because it's taken type into that world, into that uh, not quite cinema, but that mm -hmm. that 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 streaming world <clears throat> where I've done things for something that's going to be on screens, and it's. It's where I, 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 I've hoped my type would take me for, year, for the last few years. And now I've had the opportunity to work on a project where I've been able to use animated type and make, make it for, for a, a, a show or for something on screen. And it's, that's, that's where it's exciting because that's where it sees my career pivoting and being less of social graphics and oh, do another social post for this person or that person. Mm -hmm. There's like, this is like stepping up. This is where I want to be. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's seeing how my work has transitioned from those small graphics to like this big on-screen stuff. Nice. That's uh, that actually sounds amazing. Congrats. Um, we you. can read between the lines on on what that's for. Um, yeah. And, uh, hopefully, you'll <laughs> yeah. be able to share it sometime soon. Um, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. No, that's that's very exciting, and and also it's it's a great way to sort of round off the fact that you know the the hard work and dedication that you put into this really does pay off. Um, so yeah. yeah. Well done on that. Amazing. Yeah thank you very much thank you um this has been a great stream uh and uh i'm likely to actually go and watch this again uh potentially at half speed and you know nice. just really analyze <laughs> the uh yeah. the details yeah. and stuff um yeah plenty of gems of advice and um just so much flexibility and creativity and mm. you know an hour we, we went through so many different options super cool yeah yeah uh right. matt thanks, thanks for it. thanks for joining us i hope we can have you back again uh some other time maybe when you're Definitely. able to share the work that you uh you can't talk about yes. this yet that could be cool yeah yeah that'd be great yeah um so yeah thanks for thanks for joining us we will be back on friday uh liz's got a, a stream for adobe express and then next week will be the final week of streams for the year uh so we've got monday tuesday wednesday and of course friday uh so we look forward to seeing you all on behance then Thanks for watching, everyone. See you later.